It was Christmas Eve and a 12-year-old French girl named Julia was decorating the Christmas tree. Her mother was working as a nurse at the local hospital and the two of them lived alone in the small apartment in the suburbs of Paris. Late that evening, Julia's mother called to say she would not be home until late that night. Julia continued to decorate the tree with all the lovely things her mother had bought at the shop. She draped some multicolored Christmas light around the tree and hung beautiful ornaments on the branches. After placing the angle on the top of the Christmas tree, she finally finished decorating and sat down to relax and watch TV. Even though she was all alone in the sixth floor apartment, Julia felt safe as she gazed out across the light of the Parisian skyline. From her window, she could see the Eiffel Tower and the camp steamers. Most of the other tenants in the building had gone home to spend Christmas Eve with their relatives in the countryside. The apartment building was almost deserted. Julia was growing bored waiting for her mother to return. Suddenly, she thought she heard a scratching noise at the front door. She turned down the television and listened carefully. There was an eerie silence. Cautious, she slowly approached to the door and looked through the peephole. To her surprise, she saw a man standing outside, dressed in a red suit with floppy white trim. He was large and fat with a dirty grey beard and wore a red hat on his head. He knocked at the door loudly. Nervous and concerned, she asked to the door, who, who, who is there? It's Santa Claus. The man replied, let me in, I'm cold, I'm tired, and I'm so hungry. On that moment, a chill went down Julia's spine. She was no dummy, she knew that whoever this creepy man was, he wasn't Santa Claus. M -m -m Mother isn't home right now, she said, her voice shaking, P -p please leave. Peering through the people, Julia was as the man, eyes filled with anger, and his face twisted into a grimace of hate. He began knocking at the door even harder and rattling the doorknob. It's Santa Claus, Julia, he growled. Have you laid out some milk and cookies for me, Julia? You know how much Santa loves his milk and cookies? The young girl had a sinking feeling in the pit of her stomach. How did he know her name? Then the man began kicking and pounding at the door. She peeked out again and saw him breathing into his coat pocket and pull out a Swiss blade. He shoved the knife into the keyhole and tried to pry it open. Julia was terrified. She didn't know what to do. If you don't go away, I will call the police, she shouted. All of a sudden, the knocking stopped. Julia stood perfectly still, afraid to move. Minutes passed, and she started to think that the man might have been scared away by her threat. She slowly approached the door and looked through the people to see if the man was really gone. The hallway seemed to be empty. Suddenly, she saw the man running down the hallway with an axe in his hand. Julia screamed and ran to the closet in a panic. She cows down and hid behind the coat as tears of fright rolled down her cheek. She heard the sound like boom, boom, boom as the man tried to smash down her front door. There was a mighty crack as the door gave way and the man came crashing through the splintered wood, laughing to himself like <laughs> As he called out, Julia, Julia, my pretty, where are you, Julia? Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. We will have ours some fun tonight. Why are you hiding? Come on, Julia. The crazed intruder walked around the house 
and searching for the frightened girl. Julia curled up in the closet, trembling with fear. She was petrified to think what he planned to do to her. Suddenly the handle of the closet moved up and down. Then the door began shaking and she heard the man's voice laughing. <laughs> Julia, I know you are in there. Julia, open up for Santa. Open up. Open up before I open you up. <laughs> the man swung his axe and it stuck the closet door with a huge bang. Tearing into the flimsy wood, Julia screamed and began crying bitterly. She grabbed a oil coat hanger and twisted it into a point. She waited. Her eyes open wide and her hands were trembling. There was another loud crash and the closet doors gave away in a hail of splinters. The horrible man tore the doors off their hinge and thrust his head in between the coats. He was laughing and drawling like a madman as his huge, null hands grabbed at the horrified girl. Julia held up the pointed end of the coat hanger and bravely thrust it into the man's face. It went straight into his eye. He recoiled in pain, screaming with rage as blood flowed down his cheek. He ripped the oil out of his eye socket and grabbed Julia by the hair. Then he dragged her, kicking and screaming out of the closet. The man pushed her to the ground and held her tightly by the neck. Leaning over her, blood spilled out of his eyes, splattering all over her face. His mouth twisted into a grotesque smile and he whispered in her ear. Tonight, you will be privileged, my lovely Julia. I have got a list and I have checked it twice. I'm here to decide you have been naughty or nice. You can scream and scream and beg for your life. But naughty girls get the axe and nice girl get the knife. It was after midnight when Julia's mother returned home. She saw the front door hacked into pieces and rushed inside to look for her daughter. Kissing around at the carnage, her eyes struggled to take it all in. Then she began screaming in absolute horror. The Christmas tree was decorated with Julia's entrails, and her surf head was burst on the top. <laughs>